Long ago, in the faraway land of Palestine, there lived a boy named Benjamin. His small humble home was nestled into a wall of other houses, also hidden on a narrow back street in the bustling city of Jerusalem. Benjamin loved Jerusalem because God's temple was there. More than that, Benjamin loved God. His grandfather had taught him many things about God when he was just a tiny boy. Benjamin talked to God a lot. He whispered prayers each night at sunset, and in the morning, he always gave thanks for the new day. Benjamin's parents worked hard weaving and selling cloth, but their family was still quite poor. So Benjamin helped out by taking odd jobs around the city. Everyone in Jerusalem seemed to know Benjamin. They could always count on him to be honest and work hard. One bright spring morning, Benjamin sat outside in the sunshine. In his hands was a wooden box. Hi, Benjamin, called his friend Eli. What's that you've got? It's my treasure box, said Benjamin. My great-grandfather gave it to me before he died last year. He said it was very, very special. Eli opened it and looked in. There's nothing in it except for some old straw. How can this be a treasure box? Benjamin shrugged. I don't have any real treasures yet, but my grandfather said this straw came from the bed of a baby who was born in a stable. My grandfather was a shepherd then, and he said the baby would grow up to be a king. Why would a king be born in a stable with cows and donkeys? Eli laughed and closed the box. I heard some sort of king is coming today. His name is Jesus. Want to come to the city gate and watch for him? Sure. My grandfather took me to hear a man called Jesus once. I like to listen to him. Crowds were already lining the street. Some people cut palm branches from trees and handed them around. Others laid garments on the street like a carpet. Wow, said Benjamin. He must be a king. The two boys squeezed through the throng just as a donkey entered the gate. That's him. Benjamin pointed to the man on the donkey. That's Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, cheered the crowd as they waved their palm branches in the air. Hail to our new king, yelled an old man beside Benjamin. Why does a king ride an ordinary donkey? asked Benjamin. The man, the man turned. It means he comes in peace. Jesus has come to set us free. Hail King Jesus. Benjamin looked into Jesus' face as he drew near. Jesus smiled back as if they were friends. The donkey plodded and Benjamin followed, pushing through the crowd to keep up. At last, he drew close enough to pet the donkey. A small tuft of hair came off in his hand. The night Benjamin placed the bit of donkey fur in his treasure box. In the next days, Benjamin and Eli went to hear Jesus whenever they could. One day as they waited, Eli whispered, the priests have offered money for someone to betray Jesus. Why, asked Benjamin, what has he done? He only speaks the truth. They should listen to him. The priests are jealous of him. They want Jesus to stop teaching, said Eli. Someone should warn Jesus, declared Benjamin. I'm not afraid. I'll go. He pushed through the crowd until he reached one of Jesus' friends. He tugged on the man's sleeve. Excuse me, sir. Are you with Jesus? Yes, I am, the man answered. Please, I need to warn Jesus. He's in danger. The priests are offering a bribe to betray him. You must tell. Shh, said the man. Do not repeat this. I'll take care of it. And he slipped a coin into Benjamin's hand. Thank you, kind sir. What is your name? Judas Iscariot, said the man as he turned away. That night, Benjamin tucked the shiny denarius coin into his treasure box. The next day, Benjamin was asked to help his aunt get ready for unexpected guests. They would be coming for Passover dinner. He went right to work carrying water jugs. Did you hear the guest of honor is Jesus, said a servant girl. Benjamin's eyes opened wide. Imagine to serve such an important man. He must work hard and do his very best. Two of Jesus' friends came to help, and Benjamin listened as they talked of Jesus. They loved him so much. Soon Jesus arrived, and the supper began. If Benjamin listened carefully, he could hear some of their words. But what did Jesus mean when he said his wine was like his blood and would be spilled, and the bread was to be broken like his body? It made no sense. Then Jesus said someone would betray him. Benjamin smiled. He wasn't worried. He knew that Judas would prevent this. After supper, Benjamin found a broken cup. He saved it to remember the night when he served Jesus.
Later, Jesus and his friends left to pray. Benjamin wanted to pray too. He followed at a distance, watching as they finally stopped in a garden. Benjamin sat beneath an olive tree and broke off a twig. He couldn't hear Jesus, but he knew he was praying. Benjamin prayed too. And as he prayed, he rubbed the twig between his hands. Before long, his eyelids grew heavy and he soon fell asleep. Loud yelling startled Benjamin. He leaped up in time to see soldiers taking Jesus away. Stop, he cried. You can't take him. He hasn't done anything. Shh, boy, said one of Jesus' friends, holding Benjamin back. What's wrong, demanded Benjamin. Why are they taking him? They want to question him. Benjamin pulled away. Why didn't you stop them? But the man just shook his head and walked away. All Jesus' friends were gone now. Benjamin saw the smooth twig in his hand. Dear God, please take care of my friend Jesus. He prayed as he walked. At home, he placed the broken cup and the twig in his box. Benjamin, did you hear the news? asked Eli the next morning. They've locked Jesus up. Everyone says that Judas Iscariot got a bunch of money to betray him. Benjamin gasped. He had told Judas about the bribe. Maybe this was his fault. He said goodbye to Eli and wandered through the city. What could he do? Was there any way to help? Sounds of shouting made him stop, and he turned to see an angry crowd. Jesus deserved that beating, snarled an old man. That heretic claims to be God's son. He should be stoned, yelled another, shaking a fist. What's going on? asked Benjamin. Did they hurt Jesus? What do you know about this Jesus? demanded the old man. They all turned and stared at Benjamin with angry eyes. No, nothing, he stammered. His gaze dropped to the ground where he noticed a small strip of leather. He picked it up. It was from the wisp used by soldiers. It was wet with blood. He tucked it in his tunic and slipped away. Why would anyone beat Jesus? Benjamin continued to walk. If only he could make them release Jesus. But what could a small boy do? He heard loud cries as another crowd gathered at the end of the street. Hail, King of Jews, yelled a soldier as Benjamin pushed his way past men and women. And there stood Jesus. Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes as a Roman soldier threw a shabby robe over his beaten back. He expected to see hatred, but instead saw only love. Just then, a soldier shoved a crown of thorns on Jesus' head, and another struck him with a stick. Benjamin's eyes filled with tears. Why were they doing this? A few days ago, everyone had called Jesus a king when he entered Jerusalem. Now it seemed they all hated him. Benjamin squatted down and buried his head in his hands. Please, God, he prayed over and over. Please make them stop. When he finally opened his eyes, the crowd had moved along. Jesus was gone. He walked over to where they had scorned his friend and picked up a sharp thorn broken from the awful crown. He ran home. His parents paused to hear his story, then sadly shook their heads and returned to their work. Benjamin placed the thorn and leather strip in his box and cried. Benjamin called Eli. Have you heard? Jesus is going to be crucified. No, cried Benjamin. He has done nothing to deserve that. Eli frowned. My father says that only the worst criminals are put to death on a cross. Benjamin went inside and sat in a dark corner of his house. He did not want to talk or even to think about this sad news, but in his mind he could still see the evil men hurting Jesus. I must go, he finally said aloud. If this is partly my fault, I can at least be there. I can pray for him. Where are you going? asked his mother as she opened the door. To help a friend, he said. She nodded and touched his cheek. As Benjamin climbed the hill, he found a large spike. It was like those used by Romans to nail criminals to the crosses. He tucked it in his tunic and continued on. Three crosses stood at the top, but he could not force his eyes to look upon his friend. 
He noticed a small group of people apart from the larger crowd. He knew they were Jesus' dearest friends. He sat near them and bowed to pray. But the only words that came were, I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. Benjamin watched as soldiers gambled for Jesus' clothes. He tried to shut his ears to their cruel remarks. Finally, he forced himself to look up. Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes and saw such sorrow and pain that it cut to his heart. But he also saw love. And like before, Jesus looked right at Benjamin. Surely this way, his way of saying, all would be well. Perhaps he would even do a miracle. But instead, the sky turned dark and Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The ground shook and Jesus breathed his last breath. Benjamin was stunned. Jesus was dead. As if in a dream, Benjamin heard the people move about. He saw a soldier pierce his friend's side with a spear. People hurried to take down crosses and bodies before the Sabbath began. Soon they were gone, and he was alone. He picked up a stone, and the soldiers had gambled with and looked up at the dark sky. Why had God allowed it? Later that night, he opened his treasure box and placed the nail and the gambling stone inside. He looked at his collection. It had seemed so valuable when he believed Jesus was the king. But now the strange items only filled him with unbearable sadness. Benjamin called Eli the next morning. Come hear the news. Benjamin stuck his head out the window and rubbed his sleepy eyes. They posted guards at Jesus' tomb, explained Eli. Some say that Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. My grandfather told me that Jesus brought some people back from the dead. Maybe it will happen again, said Eli, but the soldiers said they're making sure people don't steal the body. Quickly, Benjamin dressed and raced to the tomb. Could it be? Could Jesus have a return to life? How? He hoped so. But the huge stone remained in place and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. As Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, he noticed a bit of white cloth hanging from a small branch. He plucked it off and rubbed it between his fingers. His parents wove cloth like this for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself as he continued toward home. That night, he sadly placed the cloth in his box. This surely would be the last thing to remember his friend by. He tried to pray, but no words came. He wondered if God even listened. Early the next morning, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone's been moved. Benjamin turned and ran from the market and up towards the tomb. Could it possibly be true? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could be. It must be. He ran even faster. Sure enough, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. When he stood, he picked up a sharp piece of broken rock. It must have crumbled from the huge stone. With a joyful heart, he marched back to town. Jesus was alive. In the market, he met a woman who was a friend of Jesus. I know the good news, he said. Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled. It's as the prophet said. On the third day, he'll rise. Some of us have even seen him. Benjamin ran home and told his parents. He placed the stone in the box. What a treasure he had now. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus said that all this came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to all nations, beginning right here in Jerusalem, explained a disciple. He said that since we all saw these things, now we can go out to tell others the good news of his forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. Now he understood that Jesus had forgiven him too, and he wanted to share the good news. He ran home and got his treasure box and went out into the streets and gathered all of his friends. Inside this box, he explained, is a great treasure. The children drew closer and listened with excitement. One by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. And so you see, he said, as he closed the box and looked into their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, 
We can all be forgiven by God the Father. They all cheered and begged him to tell the story again. That night, Benjamin opened his box one more time before he went to bed. He examined each item, handling them all with love and care. Finally, he placed the last one back in the box. Then he knelt and prayed. Dear God, thank you for letting me find all these special treasures. But most of all, I thank you for sending me the greatest treasure of all. Thank you for sending Jesus and help me to be a good servant for Jesus. Help me to tell everyone I know about the good news. Amen.